Assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, they uh, that you have been enjoying the program thus far. Uh, my name is Bilal Bakai, and we are going to be shortly getting started uh, with the next uh, session, inshallah. Uh, so we have a great lineup of speakers, uh, alhamdulillah, as, as well. Um, I just wanted to make some quick announcements. Uh, one of the main goals for this conference, inshallah, is to uh, inspire you guys to join uh, ICNA uh, um, in, uh, in, uh, in your local communities. Uh, please, you know, look online, look to volunteer. You can go on www.icna.org slash volunteer or um, you can also participate by donating, as you can see uh, below, that we are in deep uh, need uh, for your financial contribution. Uh, typically, you know, the convention would be a great spo uh, uh, location where we would be able to do this, but unfortunately, due to COVID, um, the pandemic has uh, caused uh, a lot of our cash flow to be uh, to resend as well. So please uh, make sure, uh, if you are able to, to go on www.icna.org, uh, and click donate. Um, uh, we have with us as the last uh, speaker of the day, inshallah, uh, is the last speaker uh, of the conference, uh, none other than our Amir, inshallah. Um, he's going to be addressing a topic uh, that is very um, uh, needed uh, for today, inshallah, and that would be our response uh, when Rasulullah sallallahu is blasphemed. Uh, and I think it's something that we all need to, to learn and, and understand. And uh, Brother Javed Siddiqui, who is currently the president of Islamic Circle of North America, ICNA, he is also the chief executive officer um, at uh, Helping Hands USA, uh, an engineer by possession. Uh, Brother Javed holds a master's degree in electrical engineering. So with that, we will have our Amir, Brother Javed. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي <coughs> My brothers and sisters It's an honor to be able to speak at a conference where the message is about the Prophet وسلم. It's an honor to be part of those speakers who are really revising, reviving, and reminding us about the virtues, about the status of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Fidaka Abi wa Ummi Ya Rasulullah. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, the past several months and several weeks have been difficult. And I think many of the speakers have addressed that topic specifically. What has happened in France and what continues to happen year after year since the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and since the beginning of this journey of mankind. Before we get into the, the actual topic about our response, I just want to establish something very critical. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has chosen certain people from His creation he says to Musa alayhi salam, وَاسْتَنَعْتُكَ لِنَفْسِي I have selected you for my service. I have selected you for my service. About Ibrahim, Ishaq, and Yaqub alayhi salam, he says, إِنَّا أَخْلَصْنَاهُمْ بِخَالِصَةٍ ذِكْرَ الدَّارِ وَإِنَّهُمْ عِنْدَنَا لَمِنَ الْمُصْطَفِينَ لَمِنَ الْمُصْطَفِينَ الْأَخْيَارِ And I want you to continue to focus on the word Mustafi, Mustafin, Istifa, Mustafa, all these words that are being constantly repeated in these ayat, and there are other words, Mustafa and Mushtaba. And he says about these prophets, he says that and they in our sight are the chosen and the finest. The chosen and the finest. And then he says, وَمَنْ يَرْغَبْ عَنْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِيهَ نَفْسَهُ وَلَقَدْ اصْطَفَيْنَاهُ وَلَقَدْ اصْطَفَيْنَاهُ And we have chosen him for the dunya. وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And he will be among the righteous on the, on the, on the, in the hereafter. And then he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى Again, the same word, the istifa. إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى آدَمَ وَنُوحًا وَآلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَآلَ عِمْرَانَ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Allah 
chose Adam and Nuh and the progeny of Ibrahim and the progeny of, Ali, of, of Imran and made them, gave them status over the worlds. And he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, again, Inna Allah yastafi min al-mala'ikati rusula. Again, the same word, yastafi, istifa, selection, choosing. Allah chooses from among his, from his angels and from the people. Inna Allah sami'un basir. Allah is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. So, when, you know, when people talk about this and talk about prophets, we need to establish very, this very fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who find, who has the authority and who has chosen these people. This very special, the finest of the finest, the best of the best. And he, Azza wa Jal, says about himself, Inna Allah sami'un basir. He is the all hearing. He knows what you're talking about. All those of you who are objecting on these messengers, on these prophets, he, he hears you. He knows about what you're saying. And he's the Basir and he's the one who's able to see. He sees the future. He sees the past. So, and then the other ayah, وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَالْيَسْعَ وَيُنُوسَ وَلُوطَ وَكُلًّا فَضَّلْنَا عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ وَمِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَّاتِهِمْ وَإِخْوَانِهِمْ وَجْتَبَيْنَاهُمْ This is the other word I'm talking about. Istifa and Ishtiba. All these messengers and prophets of Allah, their forefathers and their children and their brothers. Allah is the one who's decided. Allah is the one who's chosen these very fine men in the history of mankind to deliver that message. Now, once that thing is established, I want you to understand the higher the responsibility, the higher the test. You know, a, an average man, when you are judging an average man and how he reacts, a normal citizen versus a president of a country, then you have a different standard. You always, the higher the responsibility, the higher the accountability. And as such, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really makes them go through Test that no other human beings are subjected to. Now, look at the story of Nuh alayhi salam. Look at his words. Look at the hurt. Look at the pain that, and suffering that he has gone through. 950 years. I think that we cannot comprehend the length of that time because our lifetimes are very, very, very short compared to that. And he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَإِنِّي كُلَّمَا دَعَوْتُهُمْ لِتَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ And every time that I call them, so that you forgive them. I'm calling them to forgiveness. I'm calling them so they may be, they can expiate their sins. And they can be purified. And subhanAllah, how, you know, in, in today's day and age, when, when people and when small kids sometimes, and you see this in a, in a more, in a, in a uh, funnier environment, so funnier setting, what are the kids doing? You know when they put their fingers into their ears and they pretend that they're not hearing, that we cannot hear that? It's the exact same imagery that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is painting here. It says, جَعَلُوا أَصَابِعَهُمْ فِي أَذَانِهِمْ They put their fingers in their ears. وَاسْتَغْشَوْ ثِيَابَهُمْ And they kind of held on to their clothes and sort of tried to avoid Nuh alayhi salam as if he was najis, as if he was uh, really bad in some ways or, or uh, something something would really, uh, you know, a bad thing would happen to him if they got closer to him. And they continued their arrogance behavior, arrogant behavior. And that I'm sure, Nuh alayhi salam, these are his own people. He is from them. And when he continues for this long, He's hurt. He's deeply hurt. Shu'ayb alayhi salam. What are people saying to him? Qalu ya Shu'ayb, ma nafqahu kathira bimma taqul. Most of what you're saying, we don't get it. We don't understand what's wrong with you. Wa inna la naraka fina zaifa. And we think you are very weak. 
You are among the weak people. وَلَوْلَا رَهْتُكَ لَرَجَمْنَاكَ And if it wasn't for your family, we would have stoned you to death. وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْنَا بِعَزِيزٍ Now, Shu'ayb a.s., Nuh a.s., Hud a.s., Lut a.s., all these prophets, what are they doing? They are saying, O oh my people, believe in Allah, believe in the Day of Judgment. You are accountable for what you do. They're trying to save them. They're trying to save them from the fire of hell. Prophet وسلم, who was ascended to the heavens and he was able to see the paradise and the hellfire. He is looking at these people and saying, wait a second, what's wrong with you, my people? Why are you doing what you're doing? I'm, I'm here to save you. I am really worried about your future. I see if I told you there's an army behind this mountain when he ascended to the Mount of Safa, he says, and the people said, we believe you. So they had a track record of these people and these people who were the best of the best, they were the finest in their own tribe, in their own cities and in, in the, for their own people. They are the ones who were saying this, but Look at the test. Look at the amazing and difficult test. They were subjected to words in Surah Zariyat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَذَلِكَ مَا أَتَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ مِنْ رَسُولِ إِلَّا قَالُوا سَاحِرٌ أَوْ مَجْنُونَ He repeats the same thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comforting his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, this is every time for all the previous generations, every time a messenger came to them, what are they saying? Sahirun aw majnoon. You're a magician. You're a madman. You are a liar. It's it's very painful for all these people when they hear it from their own people. Just take a moment and think about your brother, your sister, your uncle, your father, your family, your wife, your children. They come to you. And say you're in front of everyone else. They are calling you a liar. What kind of a pain that inflicts on people? So brothers and sisters, the question is, how do you respond? And that's a big, that's a great question. And to be able to understand that question, the question is, should we be angry? And should we just be overwhelmed with rage? Should we just go out and start to take the law in our hand, what should we do? And the best example of this would be to look at the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look at the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba Ridwanullahi Alim. No one ever loved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the way the Sahaba Ridwanullahi Alim loved him. The word I said earlier, Fidaka Abi wa Ummi Ya Rasulullah. They would start the conversation with that word. Fidaka Abi wa Ummiya Rasulullah. O Rasulullah, may my parents be sacrificed for you. May my parents be sacrificed for you. They and they really meant it. We we've seen examples after examples. In Ghazwat Badr, after the fact, Abu Bakr Sadiq who said, I was looking for my father. If I would have found him, I would have killed him. And his father said, I was trying to avoid him. So many instances and in these Sahaba are the gold standard in the following of Prophet Sallallahu And why is that? Because these Sahaba not only understood why the Quran was sent to them, but they also understood that it came to guide them and channel their love. And we've heard the famous story about Umar radiallahu anhu when he heard about the passing of your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how he was overwhelmed with emotions. But Quran came to channel their love. This is, it's, 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 it's the love that really allows us to move in the right direction. So the question becomes, why are we not aware about the true teaching of Quran? Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, knowing, we know that you, your heart is, is tightened. لَيَذِيقُ صَدْرُكْ Right? Your heart is, is, is really contracted and is, is feeling, you're feeling very bad. 
it's really painful for you to to hear all these allegations you hear all this kind of a rhetoric and all this sort of a rejection from these people but what he says wasbir ala ma yaqulun i want you to think about this word and it has a very uh, you know profound meaning wasbir ala ma yaqulun and be patient on what they say and the word yaqulun uh, if you look at the, the the grammar side of it think about it for a second it is in the continuous sense yaqulun and on whatever they are saying and which translates to whatever they have said in the past whatever they are saying at that moment and what they will continue to say in the future that is the power of quran brothers and sisters and we we need to understand that context so we really understand how to respond to these insults a very famous story prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one time was sitting with abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu an and uh, there came some people uh, some arabs and they started to really say and curse and bad mouth and uh, yell at abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu an abu bakr siddiq was kept his cool he kept listening to them did not say anything he understood that as a sahabi or rasulullah he needs to show that character and soon after these guys realized that this they are not going to be able to get him uh really to get upset and he was very really calm and collected so they turned to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and started yelling at him and calling him names and so initially they called all this to his uh, to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu an and they were calling his mother his his parents his wife to all his his, his family members and he did not react he kept cool now when they started doing this to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i want you to understand this in the bigger context in our situation we claim love of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and look at the look at the story and what that really tells us brothers and sisters when they turned to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now Abu Bakr said they couldn't take it he couldn't take it and he stopped he stood up and he tried to intervene and he tried to stop them as he was doing this the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam started walking away and Abu Bakr said was really puzzled like oh my god what what do i do i i, I think I, i thought i was doing the right thing and all of a sudden my prophet is leaving me so he's like forget about these fools i'm just going to go and uh, go behind the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and talk to him and he he runs after him he says ya rasulullah you know uh, what happened why did you leave he said oh bakr as long as you were sitting there and they were calling you names and they were cursing you there were angels in the room there were angels all over the place and they continued to say that abu bakr is committed to the truth but as soon as you started talking back to them they left the room and i cannot be in a place where angels are not present this is a this is a remarkable lesson in prophetic uh, character the story of taif everyone knows about i don't have to repeat it here but i want you to think about the dua the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the words he uttered at the end when he was bleeding and the angels of angels came to him and offered him to crush the people of taif what did he say he said allahumma ighfir li qaumi fa innahum la ya'lamun oh allah forgive my people because they don't know now i want you to think about this for a second because he did not say oh allah i forgave them I forgave them. He said, "Oh Allah, forgive my people." You know why? He was afraid if even if he forgave them, if he said, "Oh Allah, I forgive them," Allah could be very upset. And here is our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's not personal about him. He he wanted to make sure that Allah subhanahu wa taala forgives them so they don't come under the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa taala. He reaches Mecca with an army that Quraysh couldn't stop. and i am sure as he was walking into mecca the scenery of al yasir sumayya bilal all these great sahaba and the persecution they saw this was the first time he was entering back mecca after many years 
it was all probably running in his mind and he's just remembering and he could at that time just clean up the city he could just get rid of all those tyrants and the examples you already know what did he say ya ma'ashara quraish ma tadhunnuna anni fa'ilu bikum o people of quraish what do you think i'm going to do with you you know and he says then he says whatever my brother yusuf said idhabu idhabu fa antum at-tulaqa la tathriba alaykum go you are free you know it's it's a it's an amazing amount it it really shows the true character of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he he allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about him he says wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin it shows the mercy it shows the mercy in every action i want to share with you one one last one more last story inshallah very quickly uh we heard about wahshi ibn harb radiyallahu anhu we say uh, because he was a, he was a he was a sahabi of rasulullah wahshi after the badr uh, incident after when quraish you know were de- defeated pretty badly in badr hind bin utba uh, the daughter of one of those who were killed she was so upset and she was so outraged she called her uh her slave wahshi ibn harb and you know wahshi ibn harb the savage the son of war i mean this is the kind of names they used to use at the time the savage the the son of war and uh, he was called she called him he said if you can kill one of those three people and one of them was the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the other one was hamza and ali and he, she said if one of you can kill one of them you are a free man so this man is looking for his freedom then he finally gets his chance and he kills uh, uh hamza ibn abdul muttalib the uncle of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and after the conquest of makkah obviously wahshi knew that now uh, i i am in great trouble because he's kind of wanted he's the wanted man he was one on on, on the list so he runs away to taif and then people talked to him at that time and he says wait a second there's no way for me to be forgiven and he write, and he people says just still try so he writes to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i want you to think about this exchange that had happened exchange between wahshi ibn harb the the killer of hamza ibn abdul muttalib the uncle of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, one of the one of the courageous biggest uh, you know uh, sahaba of, of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he sends this letter to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asking if there's any way for he can be forgiven and before the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even responds ayat of quran came allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was worried and was concerned about this man wahshi and the ayat said illa man taba wa amana wa amila amalan saliha except the one who repents and does good deeds fa ulaika yubaddilu allah sayyi'atihim hasanat for those allah will exchange will change their bad deeds into good deeds so look at the response of wahshi and he turns out to say well wait a second but amal salih you know what if that doesn't work out what this good deed and all the good good things that i've been i've been we are talking about if that doesn't work out what do i do and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the second batch of ayat he says inna allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha wa yushrik billahi faqad dhalla dhalalan ba'ida that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive that anyone associates partners with him but he forgives everything other than that and now wahshi says but i was a mushrik now he's writing again but i was a mushrik all my life how could that actually work out in this case <laughs> you know uh, there's a very famous uh, uh, piece of poetry he said the, the, the was said roz gunah karta hu wo chupata hai apni rehmat se main majboor apni aadat se wo mashhoor apni rehmat se that by day i sin but he veils my sin with his mercy because i am bound by the state of my disobedience 
but he is bound by his mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words at that time were, I'm sure you read these, read these ayat, but look at the context. In the third time, he's been told, Ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah. All those, all my servants, all my slaves, who those who have transgressed against yourself, who have done wrong to yourself by doing shirk. La taqnatu min rahmatillah, inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Allah forgives all sins. My brothers and sisters, this notion about paining and rejecting and insulting the Prophet Sallallahu is mentioned in so many times in the Quran in so many places. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذًا كَثِيرًا You'll absolutely hear harmful words from those who were given the book way before you and people who commit to adultery and blasphemy with God. This notion of insult, brothers and sisters, is mentioned time and again. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the recipe. But if you are patient and you are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is the best of ways. My brothers and sisters, when it comes to response, our response, and in conclusion, I want to say this. When we see these hurtful messages, when we see transgressions, movies, cartoons, articles, speeches by these Islamophobes, by these, those who are trying to taint or trying to reject this message and say these insulting remarks about the Prophet ﷺ, you know, instead of being raged, we should feel sorry for them. We should see you feel sorry for them. And if this insult, if it hurts you, if it hurts you, then please do the following. Let's commit to this mission. The Prophet ﷺ didn't ask ever for anything for his own, for his personal needs. It was all about the mission. It was all about the mission. Let's commit to this mission. Let's make sure the world knows about this man. Let's make sure that humanity is aware of the virtues and what this, this best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Prophet wasallam, has done for humanity. Let's show that through, our, through obedience to the message that he wasallam, brought. Let's show that feeling of hurt and concern through our akhlaq and character. When you become the example and you follow on the example of innama mu'ithtu li utammima makarim al-akhlaq that I was, the Prophet says about himself that I was sent to perfect character. I was sent to perfect character. Look at your character and refine your character and perfect it. And that is an example that you are feeling, we are feeling hurt. You're feeling the pain in your heart and you are going to make sure that your character is an example of the Prophet ﷺ. Brothers and sisters, let's live the life of Prophet ﷺ. Let's follow him. That is, that shows the people that you really care and you are concerned. Let's follow his teachings by being kind to our neighbors, our colleagues, the people around us. He never responded. Idfa uh, was, was the was the way of Quran. Repel with what is best. Repel with what is best. And being by being prompt in our prayers, in our charities, in our ibadat and mu'amalat, right? Being prompt in that is an example of showing concern and showing real faith and, and, and believe in the message of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you are hurt, then commit to this kind of work, the work we are engaging in right now, by supporting organizations, by supporting works, by supporting organizations such as ICNA and its DAWA programs, and making sure that ev everyone in, in the, on the planet knows about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
if you are hurt, do as much as possible because then you are going to be part of that prophetic mission. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all. I want to take this final moments and thank the organizers, the speakers, everyone. After a long time, I've been able to speak, uh, to listen to uh, Dr. Badawi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him and give him long life and health. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, Sheikh uh, Nadwi and uh, others, Alhamdulillah, that we have not been able to meet with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you and preserve you. Barakallahu feekum, jazakumullahu khayran, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakallah khair, uh, Brother David, for that reminder. And uh, honestly, at the, the end, uh, I think that's the real kicker. That's what we have to work on, right? When we all have that feeling of love towards the Prophet, but how do we, how do we turn that into action? And I think, um, alhamdulillah, uh, Ikna has been one of the resources that can really channel that love to action. Where, where all the teachings can come uh, to something that we can all work towards, inshallah. Thank you guys uh, for sharing uh, gems with us and about the life of the Prophet. I mean, this is just a small uh, step in the right direction of learning about our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So hopefully uh, today you were motivated uh, by a, a speech, a lecture, a quote, a gem that will make your journey uh, into to learn about the, the Prophet Sallallahu life uh, and start that journey inshallah. Um, and with that, I would also like to thank the organizers who put this together. Um, it's amazing that uh, yeah, Alhamdulillah, even within a pandemic, we are able to connect each other and convey the message uh, to the best of our ability. And uh, as mentioned throughout the program today, one of the main goals of this conference is to inspire attendees um, to to con to act, to get up and volunteer, uh, to do something uh, and, and inspired by the life of the Prophet Sallallahu whether it's uh, participating through um, ICNA or elsewhere within your local community, but at least become active. Um, and lastly, I would like to just request everyone that if you have not are not volunteering with ICNA, be sure to sign up. You can go to www.icna.org slash volunteer and you can sign up and become part of a local chapter. One of the greatest things about ICNA is their grassroots effort. And so their local chapters, local units uh, that you can engage with, inshallah. And lastly, uh, if you are able to uh, donate uh, with if not your time, but financially make a monetary contribution, please do so by visiting www.icna.org slash donate.